Hi, welcome back. I'm Dr. Patty. Welcome back, everyone. Dr. Angela. And today we're going to talk about different kinds of oils. So I'm a lover of skincare. Um, I'm new to skincare, so I'm really excited about <laughs> learning. Dr. Angela is very new to skincare. Very new. Um, I my mom bought me my first skincare set. Um, albeit it wasn't non-toxic or green or um, anything like that. It was from the department store. They were different days. It was, it was different very glamorous. Days, um, but I was so excited. I remember I must have been maybe like 13 or 14 and it was, you know, the whole um, skincare routine. So I've been into skincare since a very young age and, you know, I'm not perfect at it and I'm, you know, always have fun discovering new things. But one of the things that we wanted to discuss is this, this idea of oils and pore clogging and breakouts and a lot of people are really afraid of oils. I was. That's why I actually never used yeah. anything. I was always kind of acne prone. You're not uncommon. You yeah. ain't special, girl. <laughs> <laughs> what? A lot of people are afraid of oils, but there yeah. is a reason because there's something called the comedogenic scale. I just learned this. <laughs> and what it basically means, and we'll get into a little bit more extensively, but on, you know, basically rule of thumb, all oils are given a number or a, um, on a scale that uh, lets us know how pore clogging something is. So if something is rated zero, mm -hmm. that pretty much means it's not going to clog your pores. Like. Um, you know, majority of the people. One would be very low chance. Mm -hmm. Two is like low but low moderate. Uh, three would it's be like, like a fair. Eh. <laughs> yeah, kind of on the edge there. Um, three on the scale would be, you know, fair number of people yeah. might get some breakouts mm -hmm. or some pore clogging. And then four and five are most likely most people are going to have some pore clogging. And that can mean a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Dr. Angela, I believe, has the type of skin where, you know, she'll um, have a hormonal breakout I or, you know, from stress or whatever. Or and diet like, if I'm kind of off. Sure. With diet. And it's like just your normal whitehead kind of pimples that come to I a get head. a couple cystic ones these cystic. days. Cystic. My kind of skin, I don't really get, um, I did have a history of acne, I will say that, but currently it's more, um, I have a tendency to get very congested skin, so my pores get very clogged, and I have all sorts of crazy skin. My skin type is more dehydrated, so it feels tight and dry, but often can be oily on top as mm. my body and my skin try to compensate. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a different video. But so going back to the types of oils, it's important for me to use oils that are not clogging my pores because I do have a tendency to get all these like clogged pores and just kind of congested without it being whiteheads or cystic pimples or acne. I prefer a whitehead because that means it has created a pimple, it's come to come a out. head, there's pus, eventually that breaks through, resolves, there may be a little scar, but now the whole process is over. As opposed to sort of this like stuck energy or kind of clogged, mm -hmm, you know, kind mm -hmm. of traffic jam in my pores, <laughs> that is not always so fun. And that often has to do with other issues around lifestyle, diet, inflammation, um, hydration, all of that. So this whole comedogenic scale is very um, helpful. Very. It's not end all be all, it's just sort of, you know, it's like food. Like, there's a lot of healthy foods that aren't necessarily the best for everybody. Um, so it's a, it's a baseline yeah. foundation place to start. Yeah, what I thought was great was looking at, so when I was learning about the scale, anything that's a two and under basically isn't going to be a high risk for breakout. And so there's a whole bunch of oils in that category. And so then they each have different properties and it gives you a zone to experiment with all these various oils and just see what works best for your skin. Um, and so I'm going to just tell you what some of these are. And then, you know, Dr. Patty has so much more experience with these. She can kind of just chime in and tell us. Um, Almond oil, that's a two, so maybe. Um, argan oil is really common, I see that a lot, and that's a zero, so really safe. Um, camellia oil, is that how you say that one? The camellia, camellia seed oil. Mm -hmm. So the list that Dr. Angela is going through are common, um, beautiful oils that are used in a lot of skincare products, serums, oils, or as a single oil. So, so that's a one. And you we're may gonna, continue. <laughs> and we're going to put these in the description box for you yeah, guys You don't have to well. memorize all this. We haven't memorized it. That's why we're looking at notes. <laughs> um, hemp oil is a zero, so that would be a good one to try. Jojoba oil is in a lot of stuff, and that's a two, so kind of, you know, borderline maybe. So if you don't mind my interrupting, yeah. Um, as Dr. Angela continues, you know, some of these on paper seem great. 
right. Oh, it's a zero. It's probably not going to break me out. Or, ooh, that one's a two. What if it breaks me out? Now, almond oil is a two, so still technically on the non-comedogenic side and very good for a lot of people. Um, and actually even known for being helpful for um, dry skin, mm -hmm. acneic skin, mm -hmm. um, but I don't do well with almond oil. So when I'm buying skincare products or serums that have a mixture or a blend of ingredients or oils, and almond oil is at the top of the list, I will tend to avoid that one just because I've already discovered that it. about my skin. Um, and the hemp oil and argan oil, um, as zeros tend to be really good. I've seen great results in friends as well as patients, and they d tend to really enjoy those and not break out from them. Um, and jojoba oil, I learned, that was probably the first oil I learned about from um, a very holistic esthetician over 10 years ago and she had said you know jojoba is very close to the texture of our natural sebum mm. so it's often used as either a moisturizer or and i use jojoba oil um completely solely on its own to remove all my eye makeup and i've been doing that for years and love it and i think it just kind of also naturally moisturizes my lashes and the skin around my eyes um so that's my little two cents on those <laughs> so i had plenty of experience with olive oil growing up that's a two but did you apply it to your i actually did not tell face? you why because it's a great detangler and so i've used it in the oh, shower to untangle my yeah, curls yeah um, it's a little heavier but on my skin that one will break me out yeah and, so. and it's a two and you would think like oh some you know that's pretty good but it is a little bit of a heavier oil and so people can break out from that yeah mm -hmm. and then rosehip which is in a lot of products that's a one it's pretty good that's one of the few oils that i really do very very well on and it is a one um on the community do you scale. use it in the daytime as well i do it day when i'm, I'm using it i use it day okay. and night oh, um and we're gonna get into tamanu oil at the end here but i mix tamanu and rosehip oil together for um, some of my surgical scars um very nice. anti-inflammatory good for hyperpigmentation and oh, scarring. good i was gonna ask which are your yeah. favorite for hyperpigmentation um, we'll talk a little bit more about that yeah nice Okay, and then this one surprised me, shea butter, which is pretty thick, and that one is a zero to two. I would think for sure that would be something that would break you out more, but no, so I actually wanna try this, very interesting. Um, and then the squalene, um, which I'd never heard of before, zero to one. Mm -hmm. and An excellent oil. Okay. Yeah. And the tamu, tamu, tamanu. tamanu is a mm -hmm. two. Um, so tamanu and rosehip are particularly helpful, I feel, um, for hyperpigmentation. Okay. Um, rosehip is made from um, rosehip seed. I did a whole other video s specifically about rosehip oil, so we'll try to link that in the cards. Um, but excellent for um, uh, hyperpigmentation. It's full of antioxidants. Um, <laughs> and tamanu, great also for hyperpigmentation. Nice. So we missed one. We missed the castor oil, <laughs> which oh, I, we were joking yeah. about because I all of a sudden have discovered castor oil. And it's a one, which is shocking because it's very thick, but it doesn't break me out. I just started feeling like my skin could use more hydration because I was putting castor oil in my belly at night going to sleep. I was like, oh, I'm just going to put it on my face. And basically woke up super hydrated. So I've been sleeping with castor oil on my face, I mean, which I shocks her. I can't even believe it because <laughs> castor oil is low on the comedogenic scale. It's a one, um, but it's a very thick oil. Very and consistency-wise, not only is it thick, but it's actually quite drying. And I feel mm. quite dry. Like, I don't. That's like my skin will look oily, but um, it will feel dry. But and I think I'm naturally a little bit more oily probably mm -hmm. to begin with. So maybe it doesn't have that drying effect because I'm a little bit more oily. Yeah, so oils can be used in a couple different ways. Um, you often want to apply oils to um, damp skin, either dampened with a hydrating toner um, or um, even just with water or hyaluronic acid or what have you, and just help the skin absorb um, that oil. But also oils can be used as an occlusive. So um, some kind of light moisture, whether hyaluronic acid or your moisturizer, and then the um, oil on top of that to kind of seal everything in. Mm -hmm. And I think that I Dr. Think Angela right. is using the castor oil as an occlusive. I wake up glowing, guys. Because she has some natural <laughs> oil, so it's probably locking all of that in. Um, do you want to tell, I was hoping you would just bring it up, but 
Do you want to tell everyone what you told me recently? (laughs) Yeah, so I basically grew up, you know, never using sunscreen, never using any face products at all. And it was like circa 40. No, not just no sunscreen. That's what a lot of people have done. But no face cream, nothing. No moisturizer. I didn't need it. Until a couple of years ago. And I had acne, so like I thought it would make it worse. So I just... I said, thank goodness (laughs) you washed your face. I mean... I did wash my face. I was like... (laughs) I can't even believe what I'm hearing, but no judgment to any of you out there who are not using any moisturizer, sunscreen, or anything. You know, we learn as we go, but as someone who loves skincare and loves skincare products. Not a thing in my house at all. I was just like, how could you never have moisturized your face? We're oily. Greeks are oily, You you know? Yeah. It's amazing. And I said, you must have been using good cleansers that weren't stripping your natural I oils. I doubt it. <laughs> because, you know, before I learned more about skincare, and I'm still learning, um, a lot of the cleansers that I used in my youth, like, really, like, gave me that squeaky clean feeling. So I craved a moisturizer, even if my skin wasn't dry, which it wasn't when I was younger. So, yeah, this one over here, I mean, <laughs> thank God she takes a shower to film these videos. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, but it's fun to kind of talk about it and learn. Um, you should have seen the look on her face. Shock! What? I was horrified. <laughs> I was horrified. I said, "You mean your twenties, right?" She said, "No, I just started using moisturizer in my forties." I was like, "That was just a couple years ago. Like you're just turned forty a couple years ago." Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Anywho, a little bit of other science. I just want to add yeah. in that you know. Um, these oils, not only is there a comedogenic scale, um, there's oil percentage content in terms of the um, uh, how the how the con- the constituents of these oils. Mm-hmm. And so, even though there's other factors, oils that tend to be higher in oleic acid low um, tend to be a little bit thicker heavier higher in linoleic acid tend to be a little bit thinner have the consistency of a more of a drier oil because it's a smaller molecule so that's why the rosehip oil which is a little bit higher in linoleic often you know and i haven't looked specifically but the squalene oil is a very thin dry oil Mm. and that's why very good for a lot of people Mm. um so and not you know doesn't cause breakouts so that may be um I bet that one has a uh, lower oleic um, acid uh, content. So those are those are some of the oils that are good for us mm-hmm. or not good for us. Um, Going to cause less of a problem if we're prone, yeah, especially less prone. Um, but what are some of the oils that we may want to avoid if um, uh, we're, ten- we're we have a tendency to break out or get clogged pores, things like that? Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few on this list. I think that. One of the most popular ones to talk about is coconut oil because we use coconut oil so much on just, you know, legs and hair and all this kind of stuff. And so it's a four. Um, So there is such a thing as a fractionated coconut oil. And in that case, it would be two to three. So a little bit less, but regular. Yeah, coconut oil, um, you know, if I put coconut on my oil on my face, I would totally break out. But many, many people do well Fine on that. Yeah. yeah, so this is a well thing to experiment, but just that it actually is, you know, higher on the scale. Um, carrot seed oil, which I have not played with at all, but that's a three so to four. So I'm going to do an oil cleansing video soon. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And I use a beautiful, lovely um, oil cleanser that I actually talked about in my most recent um, non-toxic skincare video. Mm-hmm. And carrot seed oil is a three, four on the comedogenic scale. But this product that I use um, really does not break me out. It cleanses my skin, maintains my microbiome. Mm. Um, and I just love it. Um, and I'll tell you in a second after we finish the list, you know, why I think it's so good. So so cocoa butter is another one. So, you know, these ones are just thick oils, too. And so this is a four. So pretty likely to break you out if you're prone. Flax oil is up there as well. I don't know too many people putting flax oil on our faces, but just these are popular common oils that we might have in the house. And so maybe we're doing a do-it-yourself mask and it ends up somewhere. So it's a four. And then you were mentioning some newer popular... Well, not necessarily newer or popular, uh, but marula oil, moringa oil. These are both... Um, in a lot of skincare serums and products and it does have a three four Mm -hmm. on the comedogenic scale so our 
one of the points that we wanted to bring up is that all of these oils are beautiful oils mm -hmm. and um, can do really nourishing, wonderful things for the skin. But if you're using an oil and you're breaking out or you're not doing well on it, um, you know, it might be a blended formula that mm -hmm. contains a more comedogenic oil, even though it's cold pressed and organic and natural, it just may be a little bit more pore clogging for you. Yeah. Um, so that's something to consider. Also, this is just a baseline, you know? Almond oil should be great um, in theory for me, but I tend to break out from it. Carrot seed oil on the ha other hand, in theory should break me out. And at least this one that I'm using, I do fine. Um, so this is just a little bit of a baseline because Yes, these oils have a comedogenic scale, but you have to take into consideration how is your body's individual lymphatic drainage? Mm -hmm. What's going on with your Great circulation? Point. What's going on with your diet? What's going on with the weather and the environment, mm -hmm. environmental toxins and what, you know, the kind of assault that your skin is having? Um, lifestyle, stress level, obviously. So all of the genetics, mm -hmm. all of these things matter in terms of if a product or an oil um, may affect you one way or the other. So don't forget those factors. Don't just go by, well, this says it's a zero, so I shouldn't be breaking out, so I'm just gonna slather it on. Or, ooh, I'm never gonna use that oil because it says it's a four. Um, you know, it's fun to play and see how our body reacts and communicate and yeah. see what's going on, you know? Yeah. And it's just a good reminder. A lot of times what you see on paper is not what happens yeah. in the body for you. So just to try things It's kind of like dating, you know? <laughs> Perfect on paper, maybe not so much in real life. Or vice versa. You're like, uh, I don't know, but I'm really into this person. And geez, on paper, they just, you know, look like a loser. So same thing with dating and face oil. It should be a fit, but it may or may not be. Exactly. You gotta try. I mean, she loves castor oil and I don't. Love you know? castor oil. I mean, oil. just add that to the list of the ways in which we're different. But, um, so everyone's different, everyone's unique, but there's so many beautiful oils out there. Don't be afraid to try them out. Let us know what oils you've tried yeah. and what has or hasn't worked because it really is so individual but have fun with the journey and don't be afraid. One little breakout, don't worry, your skin will resolve. <laughs> so don't um, be nervous. Even with acne, you know, yeah. we're not static creatures where like, okay, yeah. this is now where we are. Like we now have acne, we're doomed to be this way forever. Um, it doesn't, health doesn't work like that. So um, never fear and just have some fun, let us know your experience. Yeah, and maybe when you're letting us know, you know, which oils did or didn't work for you, let us know what kind of skin you have as well. So yeah. as we're learning, we figure out, okay, this person had dry skin and this was great mm -hmm. for them, this person had oily skin, you know, those little things. Yeah, um, oh, and yeah. maybe the brands that you yeah. use, because what I was gonna say earlier mm -hmm. is that the oil cleanser that I use, even though it has carrot seed oil, which in theory um, should break me out according to the scale, it is from a small batch company, from a you know um, small batch from this beautiful little company that really takes care in terms of what herbs and oils How that they are use. Processed. Yeah, so um, I do think that intention, that energy, the quality of the source materials makes a huge difference. Absolutely. Um, so that's for sure something to take into consideration. So we hope you found this video helpful and um, we'd love to hear your feedback. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Ask us any questions and we'd be happy to answer and we'll see you back here soon. I had so much fun making this video because I learned so much from Dr. Patty. <laughs> so yes, looking forward to learning more from you guys as you chime in. Teach me, I'm new to this. Um, thanks for being with us. See you back here next week. Bye.